Hello. I didn't see you there. I was just partaking in a piece of my favorite prose. Perhaps you would like to hear it. <clears throat> Roses are red. Your links may seem iffy now. But for the love of all, SEO, please, God, don't disavow. <laughs> Not without consulting a professional first, at least. Anyways, thank you for joining me in this literary indulgence, and remember, just consult a professional before you do anything rash. Disavowing. It's more than just something that happens in Mission Impossible. I'm Nock. Was. Now, disavowed. When you disavow something in the SEO world, you're probably talking about backlinks. Disavow links are links that you effectively tell Google not to acknowledge as links back to your website. This is a practice used by many webmasters for spammy or toxic links that could be doing damage to their website. Now, it seems like, pfft, great, I have a ton of spammy links. Let me just disavow all of them. Before you do that, know that this is not a tool to be used lightly. You should never disavow any links unless you've consulted with an SEO professional. So let's get into talking about what exactly disavow links are, how to know which links to disavow, and ultimately, how to do it when the time comes. Let's get started. Google's disavow tool can be found in Google Search Console, and it's ultimately a good way to get your backlink profile under control. No matter what you do, you can't stop a bunch of spammy websites and directories from linking to your website and possibly passing on some pretty poisonous link juice to it. It's not always the case, but it can be. Now, the reason we say to take it easy with these links is because disavowing links can actually damage your website more than having the links just sit there on their own. And even though it can be undone, the effects of it can't necessarily be reversed. So if you disavow a bunch of links and your website rankings take a massive hit, then there's not necessarily any certain way of coming back from that. So let's talk about how you know when to disavow links. The first sign that you might want to disavow some links is if you receive an actual manual penalty from Google. These manual penalties usually show up in Google Search Console, and you'll probably receive an email from them as well. Usually it'll say something like they've detected a lot of unnatural links back to your website. If you receive a manual penalty from Google, it can have pretty serious consequences. So that's when you'll want to start digging through some links and maybe disavowing some. The second sign that you might want to disavow some links is if your website rankings have taken a massive hit. And if you've ruled out any other sort of things that might contribute to that, like a massive algorithm update, or maybe any other major changes you might have made to your website yourself, if none of those things could possibly be a factor, it could be your links, in which case you might want to go through and start disavowing some. Although still, maybe start with a gentle hand, because if you get too heavy handed with it before you know if that's really the cause, it could lead to trouble, as we mentioned before. It's also important to note that this doesn't necessarily have to do with the number of spam links you might have to your website in general, but more so the number of spammy links you have in relation to the number of solid and healthy links you have. So a good way to measure this sort of ratio is something like Moz's spam score or SEMrush's toxicity score. Both of these platforms have a great way of telling you where you stand on that spam score spectrum. Uh, it's usually a percentage between zero and 100, and if you're over 20 or 30%, at least on Moz, that's probably when you should start being a little bit concerned. It's important to note that the disavow tool on Google Search Console itself comes with a warning that states this is an advanced feature to be used with caution. So if you have an SEO agency on your side and somebody who can consult about this, we highly recommend it. Now, what kinds of websites usually need to disavow links? 
Easy, websites with large link portfolios. If your website has a small link portfolio, you might not be affected as much. But if your website has a lot of backlinks that could be the result of just being picked up by a lot of spammy directories, or maybe some black hat link building practices in the past because those used to be very popular, then that's when you might wanna get somebody involved. There are five kinds of unnatural backlinks according to Google's guidelines. So if the topic of disavowing comes up, these are the ones you wanna look out for. So the first kind, which I've now mentioned a couple times, are spammy directory sites. These are directories that exist solely for the purpose of link building. There's very general content, they don't serve a specific industry, and you can tell just by looking at them that there's little to no moderation. The second kinds are domains that might have changed. So the domain used to be another kind of website that was later bought out and now transitioned into some other sort of website. The third kind are domains that might have been removed. The fourth kind are links that are a result of security breaches. In other words, a website that was hacked and might have had just hundreds upon thousands of irrelevant links uploaded to it, including your website in that bunch. And the fifth kind are actually press releases. A lot of people used to use press releases as a link building tactic in the past, but Google has caught on and is now potentially penalizing websites that continue to use press releases to build and generate links back to their website. Now, it is preferable that you actually look into having these links removed before you look into having them disavowed. One way you can do that is by contacting the owner of the website that you see your link on and asking them to simply take it down. This doesn't always work. Sometimes website owners don't even get back to you. In that case, that's when you can look into disavowing. Now, how do you actually disavow a link? So to start, we would recommend making a list of all the links you wanna disavow. It can even just be a domain or a subdomain. It doesn't have to be a specific link. Compile it all into a .txt file and upload it to Google Search Console's disavow tool. There are more specific guidelines on this from Google themselves that will help you do this effectively. All right, so you've disavowed your links. Now what's next? Wait a few weeks, possibly even a couple of months and track your rankings carefully. Make sure you don't notice any massive hits that could be a result of this. And if nothing seems to have moved or if things are moving in a positive direction, it means that you probably did the right thing. So just keep an eye on things because it could take a while for all of that work to take effect. And there you go. That's all you need to know about disavowing links on Google. If you landed on this video because you were trying to make a decision about whether or not to do so, I hope this helped you make your decision. And if you just came by and learned something, that's great too. Please make sure to like and subscribe to this video if that happened, and stay tuned for more videos like this every week. I'm Ellie Bachiska. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, Peter here. Really quick, I hope you found this video useful. We just love helping advertisers. And in fact, here at Conversion Giant, we have several programs that uniquely cater towards e-commerce brands, legion, and software businesses. Down below in the description, there is a link to schedule a free 30-minute strategy session with me where we can talk about your business, your growth goals, and any challenges that you might be facing. Click down below, and I'll look forward to speaking with you soon.